Welcome everyone, Grand Gnosis Master Dr. Thor Templar here, and um, in my continued effort uh, to clarify issues that are urban legend but not fact, we're going to talk about, uh, in a very brief, straight to the point, quick way, angels. I mean, this is constantly brought up there in our life uh, in so many areas, uh, the movies, we see things, people talk about angels, think they've been visited, what are angels, etc. Well, the word angel is derived from the Greek word angelos, meaning messenger. So here again, uh, I don't think too many people know that. The idea of spiritual beings who uh, mediate between God and the celestial realm on one hand and the terrestrial realm on the other is common with Sequoisterism, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. It is likely that uh, the more developed notion of angelic hierarchy was absorbed by the Jews from their contacts with other religions of the Near East, where such beliefs were closely associated with astrology, and these are things people don't quite understand. That you know, a lot of things didn't originate with Judaism, even though they tend to be 4,000 years old. Uh, the Jews and the nature of the Jew Jewish tribes who wandered about um, areas and were persecuted and enslaved, as they every place they went and through different times uh, adapted different information from uh, their surroundings. And this is why everything is so changeable, including Christianity, where I believe there's over 300 variations. And of course, the, uh, all the holy, so-called holy books have been changed thousands of times. The Old Testament, only uh, two angels or archangels are named. Michael, the warrior angel, who's the guardian of Israel, and Gabriel, the heavenly messenger, who is also the ruler of paradise. So, you know, here again, we think there's all these angels, but in the Old Testament, there's only two. The Old Testament Apophis um, mentions two others, which is uh, Raphael, the healer and helper. So this is another thing. If you want to tap into these energies, I mean, you need to know what these gods or these angels, these messengers uh, who assist you are good for. Now, Raphael is the healer and helper, the guardian of human spirits. So you can see this is definitely one of those archangels you want to call on, and Ariel, who watches over the world and rules the underworld. It's uh, interesting and um, fascinating. So this is something that when you're using or doing magical rites, you don't know who to call on if you expect to get the proper results. The first book of Enoch adds three more. Regal, Sariel, and Remiel, and develops the idea that the higher orders of angels, cherubims, seraphims, guards, um, seraphims, uh, guard and worship at the holy throne of God, while the lower orders then uh, concern themselves in affairs of men. So that's very important as well. So, I mean, there are those that are guardians of, and it's interesting that uh, God needs guardians. <laughs> so, um, and then there are ones that actually assist uh, and work in the affairs of men. So this is important to understand, and this is where a lot of confusion happens between fallen angels and uh, the archangels as we know them. And of course, Christianity is relatively new. It took over this whole angelic understanding um, from uh, Judaism. And apparently St. Paul was very big into uh, all of this and added further orders of virtues, powers, principalities, dominions, and thrones uh, into this uh, belief system. Was also uh, included was the war in heaven in the course of which Lucifer, the proud angel, was cast out and became the fallen angel. And people need to understand, well, what is this Lucifer stuff? And we hear this all the time. People want to make Lucifer as some great dude who's here to help mankind because somehow he revolted, uh, revolted against the arrogant God uh, and he was here to help mankind. Well, he was thrown out of heaven because he didn't want to help mankind. So, you know, the stories uh, by the Black Lodge and all these Satanists get so perverted, it's uh, quite amusing. 
Furthermore, um, he, Lucifer, is known to be a fallen angel, the messenger who, who deceives man, giving them a false notion of their place in the order of things and tempting them to challenge God. Did everybody get that? So it's a deceiver spirit uh, who didn't like mankind to begin with. Uh, there was a battle in heaven and his ass and so many other ones were kicked out. I mean, I have to tell people this all the time because they seem to be so misled of the basic story by Satanists who somehow want to make them heroes and make God the bad boy. I just don't quite understand it. This idea of... Um, uh, challenging God, etc., was merged with the Jewetic uh, concept of Satan. So, you know, Lucifer and Satan, again, uh, to try and um, uh, separate Lucifer and Satan, gets to be into great semantics, and we have to understand what that means to most people today, not where it derived from either. The, uh, the persecuting angel who urges um, God to punish men mercilessly for their sins um, produced the medieval Christian devil, which is an interesting way of looking at it, who in, um, who in both temper and ruler of hell and as a universally acknowledged trickster, and again, there's that term that this uh, person writing here is talking about, a trickster is still considered demonic, not just the helper. This is another thing that the uh, Satanist and dark people, in terms of dark thinking people, uh, want to say the trickster is a motivator, a helper. Well, it's nonsense. Islam absorbed the angelic hierarchy from the Judeo-Christians. It was the angel Gabriel who revealed the Quran and the true nature of Allah to Muhammad and elevated to some importance, the idea that man has two guardian angels, one whom records his good and the other his evil actions. So there's two gods, and that's part of Islam's uh, dogma. Unfortunately, um, as you can see there, Islam is a very new religion um, compared to all the other ones, only being 1,500 years old, while Christianity is over 2,000 and Judaism is 4,000. And Buddhism is probably four to five. So we really uh, need to fully understand that. And very few people understand um, Islam and everything else to do with that. The medieval idea of angels and demons was uh, linked to a tripactic conception of the world of being heaven, earth, and the underworld. This was itself linked to the medieval cosmology in which earth at the center of the universe was surrounded by celestial spheres. When the system collapsed at the end of the Middle Age, belief in the hierarchy of angels also lost much of its force. So, you know, there's a lot of mythology here, and we need, don't need to get into the minutiae of it here. It just uh, makes things a little uh, confusing. In recent times, however, some Christian theologians following Freud have linked the idea of heaven, earth, and hell with three levels of man's spiritual nature, the superego, the ego, and the id. Uh, again, this is an, a, an interpretation. Uh, while it's popular... Angels were portrayed in human form, though sometimes with wings and nearly always with auras of supernatural beauty. Medieval theologians insisted their true nature was purely spiritual and that they took on human form only so as to appear visible to mankind. It may be significant, however, that all of the biblical accounts of angels coincide with popular belief, the angels being human bodies with human attributes. This fact gives some support to the contention of the leading contemporary UFO uh, ologist, uh, Jacques Vallée, that angels, demons, fairies, and supernatural beings are culturally determined and, of course, he links them all together, which is kind of a, the next spin on everything after all those other spins, uh, which I believe is asinine. And Jacques Vallée is not a credible source of anything. 
uh, and whatsoever. He's on the government payroll and has been most of his life and produces really a bunch of psycho battles. But without getting into that subject matter, I have a separate audio on that. Um, the concepts of angels and the hierarchy and so forth uh, has now been laid out to you pretty clear and succinct. Um, you should understand that, of course, Lucifer has always been linked to negativity, mistrust, disease, illness, etc., and is equated with Satan. And uh, he is not a nice, mis uh, nice guy that's been misunderstood that wants to help mankind. Fallen angels didn't want to help mankind. That's what the war was all about. Get it right. Let it get it clear. Know the facts. Don't be a stooge.